Oh, hey, Kieran. Oh, hey, Sarah. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, YouTube. My name is Sarah Freshly, and welcome to Freshly Read Books. So this video has taken on many different iterations, or actually it's more of like a series, I guess, at this point. But to give you a brief rundown of how we got to this point, uh, back when Booker 2021 was ending, I decided that I wanted to read more of the Booker winners. So I reached out to Kieran, who is actively trying to read all of the past Booker winners and is very far along in his progress for that, and asked him to recommend to me winners that he thought that I should read. like. If I was only going to read a few winners, which should those be? So he ended up picking five books that were each from a different decade and recommended those books to me. So we did a video call to talk about which of those books would be. They were my first time hearing which books he recommended. And initially I was going to read all of them and then we would get together and talk about it and that would be the video, but that would be so very long. So now it's going to be split up into each of the books so you can expect at least five of these videos. So I'm going to be pulling from the first time that Kieran and I met. So finding out that the bone people, you already know because it's in the title of me finding out that the bone people was going to be one of the books that I would be reading. And then I'll also be pulling from a conversation that we had after I had read the bone people talking about it as well. How, how we do it over there? Oh, just fine and dandy. How, how are you? Good to hear. I'm doing exceptionally well. Do you know why? Why? Because it's Booker. It's not book season. No, nope. we're just talking about Booker. But we can't and that makes stop me... talking about it. The funny thing is, is it's basically Booker season again. I mean, we still have some time. We have like less than a month until the long list for the International Booker Prize is announced. Initially, I was planning on doing this between when Booker 2021 had ended and when International Booker 2022 would start. But at least this one will be out by then. Yeah, we're talking about previous man booker winners um why uh because i'm not ready to let go of booker season yet can you name any booker winners yes life of pi because we've spoken about that a few times uh, yeah and i love that book <laughs> um wait no, no no i got this girl woman other yes midnight's children <laughs> those are the ones i, I, I can I, name i could probably if i tried really hard i could probably name a few more but Let's try really hard. <laughs> Lincoln and the Bardo? Yes. Was that a yes. winner? You have read, um, I, at least I know two others. I have? I thought that I... You have. Oh, oh Shaggy Bane. Uh, two more okay. on top of Shaggy Bane. <laughs> I thought that the only winner that I'd read was Life of Pi. Is Wolf that wrong? Hall and Bring Up the Bodies. Oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> you did forget. Yeah, and Shame. they're wonderful. And not too long. And no one's named Thomas. No <laughs> yeah, there were Thomas so in few Wolf Hall. Thomases in the book. <laughs> it is funny to me that I only read the Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies so that I could read The Mirror and the Light, the third book in that trilogy, because it was on the Booker 2020 long list. And so now I associate it with that instead of the fact that each of them won the Booker Prize when they were published. I'm going to list. move on to 85, which was another woman to win the prize the first new zealander Ooh. but what i recently discovered she's also <laughs> the first maori writer no way that is kerry holmes the bone people okay i've heard of this one. this is the most recent booker winner i've read oh maybe that's why i've heard of it <laughs> yes <laughs> I said, do many voice notes. This is the one where I said, I can't make head or tail what's going on in half of these pages. Oh, oh boy. This novel is about Carolyn Holmes, which is loosely based on Carrie Hume. Kind of hear the difference mm -hmm. there. It's like a slight difference. And she lives in the middle of a swamp jungle. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what it is. A young boy called Simon uh -huh. breaks into the house. She starts ringing people to try and figure out where he's come from but she can't get him to speak and he's moot throughout the entire book and then we come across his maori father joe but i will give you the heads up simon is the image of the colonizer he is a white boy he is the mm. white man you have Kerwin, who is maori and you have joe who is maori both from different tribes mm -hmm. 
and this talks in a very oblique way of trying to beat out colonization through child abuse. So okay. that does happen in this mm-hmm. book as a heads up. <laughs> Thanks. It's not, it, there's about four instances of it. Mm-hmm. And, and all four are a bit, oh, okay. And then towards the latter part, the last 100 pages, is an absolute galore in Maori mysticism, which I'm pretty sure most of it went over my head. <laughs> I can't wait. I'll, Se- we'll, second we'll leave it at that one. There we go. So that was the introduction that I got to the Bone People, which I actually had heard quite a lot about from Kieran prior to us meeting and talking about this, but I just didn't realize that it was the same book initially. So Kieran did a great job of explaining what The Bone People is about. Basically three people, Carowin, Joe, and Simon. Carowin, I would say, is the most like protagonist-like character, but it's really about all three of them and their relationship with each other. Now I do want to talk about my general thoughts before we dive into the video call version of me talking about this, because Kieran and I did talk throughout the process of me reading The Bone People, and so we didn't really really talk about initial thoughts as much once we got to this point. So I really ended up loving this book. I was super intimidated by it going in because I knew that there was a lot that was kind of hard to wrap your head around or to really understand what's going on at the time because Kieran struggled with that and shared those struggles with me. But I think that because of that, that really helped me in my reading process because I was like zoned into this book. And so I didn't struggle quite as much with those things. That being said, I don't think that I really got all of the themes that were portrayed in the book. I think that this is something that could benefit on a reread because I know that this aspect of colonialism shown through these three people is a huge driving factor of this book. And I wish I had been more present or had that idea more present in my mind as I was reading through because I think that I did miss some of that or a lot of that, honestly. But anyways, let's jump to Kieran and I talking about the book after I had read it. The Bone People. The Bone by, People. By Carrie Hume. Carrie Hume. 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 Yes. So I already said I really like this book. But for the people that might not have watched your review video, you better watch it. Sarah didn't. I did today. (laughs) She did after I reminded. (laughs) And now presenting a montage of Kieran and Sarah trying to find the words to describe the overall feeling of the Bone People. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, especially as something that shouldn't really work, does work within this novel. But there was just, there's something about it that is not surreal, not absurd. It's very, like, almost intangible. Mm. But it's not weird in the fact that... I just read, like, Cursed Bunny, and that was weird. So I guess maybe in that sense that I would never use that word to describe the bone Mm -hmm. people. It's very domestic. It's very Mm -hmm. kitchen sink esque. But I wouldn't say it's yeah. It's not weird like the dangers of smoking in bed. I want to. I want to keep going back to absurd because because it's not absurd. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you think of like the Castle of Otranto, I suppose Mm -hmm. the the end of the book with the Maori mysticism is that way inclined. But I think it's very yeah rooted in the real. It actually reminded me a lot of. The House of the Spirits by Isabella or Isabel Allende. It's just the way it is. And there's Mm -hmm. nothing, yeah, absurd about it. And I I like when books do that. It it almost makes the the extra not feel so extra. It's a hard book to compare. It's very, I don't like saying the word unique, um, but I think it is. Mm -hmm. But even in the structure and the form, which is one of the reasons why I, I chose it for past winners you should read. It kind of stands on its own. I'll leave it at there. It's <laughs> trying on its own. So we touch on it a bit here, but the Bone People really plays with this form of writing and 
this interesting style, but also the way that it draws in this mysticism that there is. And it's almost like magical realism in the lightest sense possible because there is this type of magic almost that's in it, but it's treated as so normal and just like a thing that's there that you barely even really need to pay attention to. So it's treated in this very like passive way. And although it's so hugely important to the story and in some areas it completely changes the way that the story goes, it's still kind of just a secondary thing that just like exists. But what I thought was really interesting from our conversations is I struggled with it to kind of understand what was going on, the plot points, the development um, after the first 100 pages, as soon as you moved outside of the spiral tower in the swamp mm -hmm. situation. I, I found that quite difficult. And I was expecting yourself to go down that route, but that never seemed to have happened. Like there was a difference in um, the in the writing in that like it became harder to tell sometimes who was who you were following. It's it's weird because you get to know the three characters so well that like you start to kind of recognize their voice in it, especially, I feel like Simon mm -hmm. was the easiest, but even like Carowin, the way she like plays with words and everything, That's I think not... it helped hearing like knowing your experience and having you be like you know when when you leave the tower and stuff I was like okay like I gotta be on it <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you can't be like just reading this I stopped reading it like right before bed because that was not and it, my brain was already like too done for the day oh I had some times when I moved into some passages of this and it was like 11 p.m and my head just went you're not taking any of this in right you do have mm -hmm. to be like on the ball with this yeah I, I i think a question that i had to ask myself uh, i had the benefit of reading this not alongside but i was asking a lot of questions to uh, renee who has a channel so i read um this book who is from new zealand who is maori and i could soundboard a lot of my questions to the the why why is Hume doing certain things or this image keeps coming up what's the what's the reasoning what's the importance of that so she was able to give me a framework unless I don't know you haven't spoken to someone who is from New Zealand or Maori about this mm -hmm. do you feel as though you understand Maori culture and New Zealand culture maybe better than I did previously which was like non-existent but mm -hmm. not as a whole like I don't I don't feel very confident with what I know about it I definitely want to read more and in fact we were talking afterwards and like I it kind of like hit me in the face like oh that's right a huge part of this novel was the fact that like these three people are all kind of different mixtures of uh European and um, Maori. And in the synopsis, I think it says it like it, it, you know, mentions that this book is, is about that, about how, you know, we've got people that have like these different backgrounds. Like there's so much of that I missed, unless it was like blatantly obvious mm -hmm. and talked about specifically like a location that was um, important to Maori people or things like that, that were thrown into the story. Like those, obviously I knew, <laughs> but mm -hmm. on a whole, I wasn't thinking about that throughout it. Um, and I was kind of kicking myself afterwards for not paying more attention to that but i would say that the bone people isn't going to i don't think it holds your hand and similar to you i, I was a bit like well, I, I know it better but quiz me on any of this <laughs> better and than like nothing <laughs> yeah but i think because what's really interesting is that joe who is i'll say the stereotypical maori person doesn't speak the language, seems right. very um, at arm's distance to it. He, mm -hmm. he looks Maori, but isn't, not embodying Maori. Hugh talks about that there's a, there's like an instinct to go, white person New Zealand, not white Maori. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a stark difference between how Joe is treated to how mm -hmm. Carowin is treated if you couldn't see them, you would think that Joe is the New Zealander who's not 
Right. He doesn't not that he doesn't know anything about Maori or what it is to be Maori. He, he just seems so far removed from it all. Where Carowin is like the the staunch one, and then you have Simon. And I think it's a very cl- a clever choice that he's mute in all of this, that he kind of fits it. Mm-hmm. He's in the middle. He, he's stuck in the middle, but he doesn't really have anything to say on the topic. They were, he he observes what happens. Right. So, yes, well, I do think that I learned a little bit more about New Zealand, about Maori culture. I still have so much to learn and like such a lack of knowledge in that area. However, I would recommend this book to people that are interested to get started because even though I'm sure it would be better to approach this book with having some type of background understanding of the culture, I do think that it did a good job of getting me interested in learning more. And I feel like that's kind of the first step for somebody that knows absolutely nothing. Also the atmosphere of this book, I was obsessed with. And it did give me that feeling of like seeing a bit of New Zealand without actually seeing any of New Zealand. So sadly, just before the start of 2022, Carrie Hulme did pass away. During the month of February, Booker is recognizing her and the Bone people and kind of diving in, doing these different conversations about it and pulling in different opinions about it from other people that have been uh, nominated for Booker or have won Bookers. So I'm going to link in the description if you'd like to read a little bit more about that on Booker's website. So yes, that is The Bone People. So the next decade I am reading a winner from is the 2010s. So it's going to be one of these, the one that Kieran recommended. Let me know in the comments which one you think it's gonna be. And I think that that video will be coming maybe March-ish. I'm currently reading the book, but we do also have International Booker getting kicked off soon so we'll see but anyways i hope that you enjoyed this and please do let me know if you did because i'm considering continuing this past the five books that kieran and i are going to be talking about that were like a part of that initial call that we had and so if this is something that you're interested in seeing more of then i might continue anyways that is going to do it for this video consider subscribing if you haven't already i upload new videos every wednesday so i will see you then bye 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 (laughs) thanks Thanks for watching us talk about the bone people.